Hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Jonathan Cohn, and today I have a special video talking about my Star Trek book, Hot Takes. I think this is going to be a fun video because I'm not ranking anything in this video. I'm not reviewing a book. I am discussing what I believe are my hot takes. Now, maybe I think a, a lot of people might agree with me. And if you do, please let me know if you agree with me or if you disagree with me in the comments. This is just my opinion on stuff. But I would uh, really like to foster a conversation about things I think should happen and shouldn't happen in Star Trek books. And then also some just other general opinions that I have about Star Trek books. So... Uh, let me begin. I have four main topics for this video. The first main topic that I'll talk about is uh, Star Trek post-Nemesis books are easier to jump into than post-Return of the Jedi Star Wars AU Legends novels. I think that this is the case because Star Trek people who are going to read Star Trek books generally have a good knowledge of who the types of characters are. And there's a very good interconnection between them where the authors are very good at establishing um, uh, different things. For example, you could read something like Destiny without having read many other books in the Star Trek line. You could uh, jump way ahead and read The Fall without really having read much. Or you could jump way back and read uh, the Avatar books without having read much. Or you could jump all the way to the end, possibly. There's, there's all these different things, except for the last trilogy that they released. Just about everything I think you could jump into and it would work because the authors do such a good job of explaining the, the, everything you need to know without it being too long. And they also do a good job of telling self-contained stories that interconnect to other things. There are exceptions to this rule. There are a few books that are harder. But... The problem with, say, Star Wars EU books is that the Star Wars Expanded Universe got so interconnected towards the end that once you had something like the New Jedi Order, you had 20, almost 20 books in a row that were just book after book after book that you really had to read all of them to get the full experience. And so once those were coming out, you couldn't just skip ahead. You had to catch up on what you missed. Whereas with Star Trek, you could miss a little series here, and you're going to really easily pick it up here. They might have a series that's like five or six books, but they never really go beyond that. Most of their book series, like a trilogy, maybe five books at most. And so I think it's a much easier type of a story and much easier type of a universe to jump into. Now, it's more complicated since they have like six different shows that they're trying to interconnect and six different ships and groups that they're following. But if you look up the timeline uh, on the, uh, the Almighty Trek list from uh, that on, when you search the Almighty uh, Trek reading chart, uh, flow chart, if you look that up, it's very easy to follow, I think. So that is my number four, my, my uh, hot take. My number three hot take is that we need a lot more novels in the Kelvin timeline. Uh, to my knowledge, other than the novelizations, there have only been two Kelvin timeline novels, and they only released in 2020. The Kelvin timeline has been around since 2009. I think the Kelvin timeline is so rich an area that we could explore. There's a couple of reasons behind this. One is that we don't have you know, next generation for that. So we can take the characters in whatever direction they want. Even though they say all the time they're going to make a new Star Trek movie, for, with that crew, I really, it, it, it's, it's unlikely now. It's been, it's been several years. They do not look likely to do another Star Trek movie with that crew. That being said, I think you could do several novels and do a lot of big things with them. And then if the movies go another direction set the movies just later in the timeline um, because there's, there's so much of the timeline we could explore here. There's also another element to this that I think would be interesting, which is that I would like to see the Kelvin novels tell the same type stories but in different ways. For example, the motion picture, I think, is a really interesting story where you have uh, the, the, the alien entity that comes in and is destroying everything in its path and the Enterprise is sent to go against it. I have this what if in my mind of, well, what if the Enterprise failed? Or what if the Enterprise got there too late? Or what if the Enterprise uh, did something different? How would it have changed? The Kelvin timeline is the perfect opportunity to present this story idea 
but from a new perspective. They've already done this with Khan, introducing him earlier on in the timeline, and changing who dies and who lives and who survives and things like that. I think that would be a really cool idea. Uh, we could also talk about the Klingon Wars, and you could uh, maybe, instead of the Klingons uh, joining up with uh, you know, the, this group, you could have them join up with this group. You could tell different types of stories, or you could have an opportunity to reimagine how the next generation would have gone, how, how Picard would have, what he would have done in the Kelvin timeline. There's, there's so many opportunities for expansion in the Kelvin timeline. And I know it's not as popular as the OG timeline, but I think that there's a ripe area. And the problem is the two books they released, they kind of, uh, they were kind of mostly written. They just had to rewrite a few things afterwards and they sat on the shelves for a while and it just, they did not have buzz about them. They did not generate, if we knew they were starting a new timeline, we have a series of five books that we're going to do that's going to launch the Kelvin timeline into the future. I would be so excited. Instead, we've just had a little whimper of uh, two little books that didn't sell that much. So that's my number three hot take, is that we need more from the Kelvin timeline. My number two hot take is probably the hottest take on here, and that is the new Trek books, the ones for Discovery and Picard, are actually excellent and very helpful to the franchise. Um, I've read a couple of Discovery novels. I've also read a couple of Picard novels. I've read, uh, if I'm remembering right, I've read two Discovery novels and three Picard novels, and I thought all of them were excellent. Some of them were more excellent than others, but what those books did is they gave me more of an appreciation. The two Discovery books I read, I didn't like Discovery at all. I think it's one of my least favorite Star Trek series, but I actually appreciated it more because of those books, and I actually wanted to watch it because I read those books. Same with Picard. I didn't really care for Picard too much. I liked it a little bit better than Discovery, but I didn't love it too much. But the books really made me more interested in the series. And I think that the writers that they've chosen to write these new series books are just get Star Trek. And so they're able to add in the getting Star Trek with this new fresh material. And it's really engaging. I think that they, because the books are able to be longer, we're getting full, complete stories with really well-developed characters and well-developed plot lines. And so it's just wonderful getting to have this many excellent novels uh, in the new Trek line. Now, of course, there might be some duds that I haven't read, but as a whole, I like them. And so I think that even if you dislike the new Trek shows, I think you could really enjoy the new Trek books because I think they're just doing a wonderful job. And uh, my final hot take is something that I've said on the channel before, but uh, I think is also very relevant. There are two authors that get, uh, that get thrown out there for the best author. There's an older generation that says Peter David, that loves Peter David. There's a kind of younger mid-generation that says it's David Mack as the best author. Both are very respectable choices. I love some of David Mack's books that I've read. And I loved one of the um, Peter David books that I've read. I haven't read as much from Peter David, but I've, I've read one that I absolutely loved, one I didn't like. But I think, though, personally, the, the, the victor for me, the person who has absolutely captivated me every time I've read his books, is none other than John Jackson Miller. I always enjoy his books. They're always so much fun, and I think that he's just a wonderful writer. And so I think that it would be uh, great for him to continue to get more novels, and I hope that more people read his books, because I think that he truly is the best writer in the genre. And we've now he's now had several books behind him. He's written, at this point, I want to say... Uh, seven released Star Trek novels, and then he has one that's about to come out. So this he's about to have his eighth Star Trek novel come out. He's had enough time to, to gestate uh, for his novels to really connect with people. And he's written novella, a uh, novella too. So he's really had a lot of time in the Star Trek universe. And I think that he's more than earned his keep. I think that he's well worth it. So that is my uh, list of my four hot takes. Do you agree with anything I said? Do you disagree with anything I said? I'd love to generate more comment about, uh, and comments and conversations about Star Trek books. So let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. And until next time, I'm Jonathan, and thank you for watching.